Sometimes when you're using Linux, you want to schedule tasks that'll happen at certain times or every day. Um, and this is pretty easy with cron. So what we're gonna do is look at using cron to schedule tasks. One of the things about cron though, is it runs as a separate service and it does not use your normal environment when it's running. So if I were to run a program and I wanted to make sure it ran, I wouldn't necessarily just type in the name of the program. I might type in the complete absolute path name of the program. For example, let's say I wanted to run a program, run the date program. If I run date, it runs. And it tells me the date. And so maybe I want the date to run every minute, every day, and put its information, whatever its output is, into something like a date log. So I could do date, and I could redirect into date log. All right, or maybe it's just date.log. All right, so that would work. Now, if I'm running with cron, though, the date command might not know where, I mean, it might not know where the date command is, and so I would have to give it the absolute path name. And the way to find that out is use the which command. I can see that's in user bin date. And I'm putting these things in my root directory. So the command I might want to run is actually user bin date and redirect into root date dot log. So I have everything in absolute path names. And that works perfect. And then I can look at the file, cat out date.log, and I can see that it has the information there. And if I wanted to append instead of overriding, I could use two greater than signs, and then every time it runs, it will append instead of overriding. So there we go. So this is the command I want to run. I want to run it every minute. Now, in order to use cron, it's important to know the format for dates. And the easiest way to, to learn that is to look it up in the man pages. So it'd be man five cron tab. So it's in the fifth cron tab manual. You scroll down and you'll see that there is this section right here where it tells you which fields. You first get the minute, the hour, day of the month, month, and the day of the week. So if we want to run every minute, then we'd have a star for minute, a star for hour, a star for day of the month, a star for month, and a star for day of the week. All right, so let's go ahead and quit out of that. And we'll use the cron tab now. So the way to get into it is cron tab minus E for editing your cron tab. This is a VI style interface. You can change it by changing your editor. Um, but you switch in insert mode by pressing I. And let's put a comment here. So first we want to make sure we know that minutes come first, then hours. And then we have um, days of the month, so month, day. We have the month. And we also have the weekday. So we would comment there, it's nice, helpful. All right, so if I wanted to run that program every minute, put five stars, and then I would type in the command. So it could be user bin date, and it goes into root date log. All right, so that's all you have to do. And once I save out of this, it would run. Let's say I wanted to have a different command that would also run. Maybe I want to know which uh, users are on the system or use the W command. So we'll save this one first. Press escape to get out of insert mode. Then a colon WQ for write and quit. All right, so the W command. W command tells me which, which users are on the system. So maybe I want to run that regularly. 
So I can once again use which w and it says user bin w. So I go back into the cron tab and I'm going to add another one right here. And this one, let's say I want to run it every hour. So I could say maybe I'll run it on the every hour at the 30 minute mark. So I go to insert mode 30 every hour. The 30 minute mark and it's user bin w. And I put that into my root w.log. Okay. Maybe I had a different script that, um, like some kind of a backup script. Maybe I would have a backup script that I want to run every day at 3 30 in the morning. So I could say, 30, 3, and then it'd be every day. I do that. Or maybe that's in root bin backup.sh. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when these things run, they don't expect to have any output that prints the screen. If there is any output that prints the screen, Usually the cron process will take that output and it will send it to you in an email message. So it's best to write your scripts so that if they run perfectly fine, there's no output. And if there's an error, there's output. If you don't want to see any output, you can redirect output to dev null. And you can redirect standard error, also dev null which makes it so that it does not print on the screen and you don't see anything. And that's it.